Hey YouTube, Iowa Guy here. I just wanted to bring you a quick performance review of the Jerry 31 binocular night vision device. What I've got lined up here is a bunch of footage of less than perfect lighting conditions. Um, I also have a little bit of video from a Photonus Echo and a thin filmed Elbit uh gen 3 pbs 14 with a 2500 plus fom what i'm trying to do here is give you guys a good comparison video of the three together as well as what the capabilities are of the jerry 31s like i said all of the video is going to be pretty much the worst case lighting conditions because in high moon environments, high light environments, um, all the tubes are going to look very, very clear. Uh, you'll notice the graininess of all of the images because the units are trying to work hard. you got to excuse me. I've got a little bit of a cold here and I'm trying to power through it. So all of the video that you're going to be looking at here has pretty much been taken on a no moon night um, until the end. I wanted to give some contrast in there just a little bit. I did not use any illuminators, any kind of supplemental light at all during this filming uh, again because I just kind of wanted to give you guys a raw take on what the unit's actually capable of I think in the lighting conditions that were available uh, no matter what kind of image intensifier tube that you're running in your devices you're going to be using supplemental light because it's pretty much worst case scenarios with little to no ambient light around at all. In that last one, you did see a little bit of flashlight movement behind me. Somebody was running in their car to get something. Um, now I'm in the north woods of Wisconsin. There was no moon. Um, we're pretty far away from any large towns. And you could see the unit does pretty well. This was about four in the morning. There was pretty much no moon. It had set for the evening um, a while before the sun had come up. It's about 50 yards to the end of the driveway. And with my naked eye, I could just make out the snow on the edge of the turnaround with the trees. That was about 10 yards away. Um, it, was, it was very, very dark. And then when I turn around, you'll be able to see down to the lake i could see it pretty clearly um uh, keep in mind any images that you're gonna get out of filming with an iphone through a tube are gonna be grainier and they're just not gonna be as clear as as they are in person so keep that in mind Coming up next here, uh, we're back in Iowa. I've got a Photonus Echo with a FOM of about 2,000. And directly after that, it's going to be footage of the Jerry 31. Conditions were exactly the same during both of the filming through each of the tubes. Um, there's no moon, no ambient light pretty much whatsoever. And they pretty much were identical. I really couldn't tell the difference between the two, uh, between the Photonus Echo and the Jerry 31. The Jerry 31, I filmed out of the left tube, which has a FOM of about 1,500, and the Photonus Echo was running about a 2,000 FOM. 
same night. Again, in this footage, there's somebody moving around me with a flashlight getting something. It might be footage that I had previously recorded and used earlier in the video. Uh, might have been different stuff. I just kind of cobbled together uh, all the footage that I've taken recently, and I'm playing around with the editing devices that I have right now. So coming up in the next clip here after this one is going to be a night where it was no moon, but conditions were a little bit different and the sense that there was a lot of snow around. So it made the image brighter than you would think. Now with my naked eye, uh, when I'm alongside of this road here that you'll see in a second, I could not see uh down into any of the valleys, down into any of that cornfield that was plowed and uh, the snow had melted off of it. I couldn't see it hardly at all in the darker spots. Um, if there's a coyote or a deer or something, I might have been able to pick it up with my naked eye if it was in the snow. However, if it was in that muddy, dirtier side of the field, I wouldn't be able to see anything. Um, my feel with the Jerry 31, I probably would have been able to make something out, especially if it was moving. Yeah, I don't think it would have been a problem. Now we're moving into a high moon night with the Jerry 31s. Um, we're at about 80% moon in this. I wanted to give you guys this as a contrast, uh, just to see the clarity and pretty much no matter what kind of unit you're running, they're all going to be pretty clear if, if you've got that much ambient light. Um, right after this, I'm going to go into a clip of a PBS-14 uh, with a thin-filmed Elbit tube running a FOM of about 2,500 to 2,800. I don't remember exactly. Um, but that's going to be coming right after this. Here's that Elbit tube, and it's running about 25 to 2800 FOM, 30% moonlight. Um, and you could still see there's a little bit of graininess to it. There's a little bit of scintillation going on. Um, not too much, though. And I do want to reiterate the fact that uh, likely, no matter what device you're running, if you're going to film it through an iPhone or any other type of camera, it's not going to turn out to be as clear as what you actually see with your eyes. So keep that in mind. That's pretty much everything I have for you guys. Hopefully you got something out of this video. If you did, please like, subscribe, and even share. Appreciate you guys tuning in.